Today on Upfront, House Speaker Paul Ryan, the nation's most powerful Republican lawmaker, joins me for an extended interview. Next, Ryan on likely Republican nominee Donald Trump. Why did Ryan tell Republicans to vote their conscience? Plus, the Republican National Convention, is there really a move among delegates to dump Trump? And the chaos in the Capitol. What happens when Congress returns on July 5th? Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. House will be in order. The chair wishes to make an announcement. This was the chaotic scene in the U.S. Capitol Wednesday night as House Democrats staged a nearly 26-hour sit-in demanding votes on new gun legislation in response to the deadly mass shooting in Orlando. Wisconsin's three Democratic House members and Democratic U.S. Senator supported it. The public is upset. They want action, and the Republicans don't want to give it to them. We're going to fight for action, and I think the public is willing to start changing the faces of Congress if we're not going to change how we operate. And hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. Our guest today is the subject of the Democrats' frustration, but Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan has his own frustrations. He called the sit-in a publicity stunt, and he pointed out the Democrats are trying to fundraise off it. Speaker Ryan, the first district congressman from Janesville, is our guest today on Upfront. Speaker Ryan, it's good to have you on hey, the Hey, good to be back. Thanks for having me. We'll talk about the sit-in in just a moment, but I want to begin by talking about what happened in the United Kingdom, mm. the decision by the residents there to leave the European Union. The markets were rocked on Friday. A lot of concern about economic uncertainty. What does this mean for the world economy and even the U.S. economy? Do you share those concerns? I, I think there's going to be a little bit of a consternation immediately, but I think things will settle down. Uh, so I do think this will even itself out. Uh, you can't help but relate to the thinking. You want your government uh, to be accountable to you. You don't want uh, people in other countries running or regulating your country. You want self-determination. You want sovereignty. Um, those are familiar uh, sentiments that we as Americans share so deeply. So, so you understand so I why can't, they did Yeah, they did. it should not be a surprise that, that people in Britain want those kinds of principles that we take almost for granted here, but we have to uphold. And so, no, I don't think this is going to be long-term chaos. I think, this is, I think the dust will settle eventually. The real question is, how does the transition occur? Is it ugly and difficult? Uh, there are some in the EU who I, want to, who I think want to make it ugly and difficult for the, for the Brits. Uh, so that no one else follows, or is it a smoother transition? We'll find out. What, what do we do, uh, uh, what does the U.S. do in terms of trade with the United Kingdom, yeah. given what's happening? It's a good question. So, number one, we need to emphasize that they are our indispensable ally. We have a special relationship, and also I think that does mean that we should have a trade agreement with, with England, with, with, with Great Britain. So uh, that is something that we should begin discussions with Great Britain to ease concerns so that we do have sm a smooth trade relationship with Great Britain because they are our indispensable ally and we need to show our solidarity with the people. Immediately, this is something we should undertake well, immediately. Yeah, it's obviously it takes time to do right. something like this, but I think it is something that we should be uh, working on. I have to ask you about what uh, Donald Trump said on, on Friday. He did say that he saw parallels in what happened in the United Kingdom to what's happening here, that there was sort of a, a message from voters that they were turned off by the elites, uh, they were concerned about immigration, some of the issues yeah. we hear about no, in I our agree campaign with that. here. Do you, you think that I there do. are parallels? I do. I think uh, the key parallel, I think, is people feel like government has grown so distant from them. People feel like their voices aren't being heard. People feel like they don't have an accountable government. And in England, I mean, excuse me, in Great Britain, it's people in other countries making decisions for your nation. It's, it, they're made in Brussels. Here, we have government that has gotten so cold, so big, so distant that we are losing self-government. One of the planks of our agenda is to restore self-government, self-determination. The legislative branch should write the laws, not unelected bureaucrats in Washington. That is a growing trend that we're very alarmed of, and I think people are seeing it. I talk to business people in Wisconsin, employees in Wisconsin, who are saying all these regulations from Washington are killing us, and I, as the rec elected representative, have no say-so over these things. So I can't tell you how many times I hear from constituents in southern Wisconsin about how this government has grown so unaccountable and distant from Americans, and our elected officials don't even have a say-so. That is the kind of frustration that I hear, which I think is similar to what you are hearing in Great Britain. So let, let's talk about some other people who say they're not being heard, and those are the House Democrats and stages. <laughs> oh, no, say, we heard them plenty. Yeah. <laughs> you did hear them, and, and your reaction was you're worried about the decorum yes. in the House. They're talking about possibly doing more of this sort of thing when they return from recess on July 5th. 
Are you going to handle it the same no, way? No, we're not going to handle it the same way. What would you and do we differently? Won't, well, we're working on that, but we will not. We will not take this. We will not tolerate this. This is the oldest deliberative body in the world. We're the oldest democracy, and we have rules of decorum so that we can peacefully settle our issues and actually have democracy. Here's what the Democrats won't tell you. This bill that they want was already voted on and defeated in the Senate, so it's not going into law. This bill was brought up as an amendment in a committee in the Congress, in the House, the Homeland Security Bill and Appropriations, and defeated on a bipartisan basis. So it's not as if democracy is being pushed aside. Democracy is working. They're just not getting their way. They're just not getting the vote on a bipartisan basis. But more to the point, what they decided to do was say, we're going to shut all the rules down. If they want to get a bill to the floor, there's a procedure to do that, and they can do that. They've chosen not to do it. It was a publicity stunt. And while they were on the floor doing this, breaking the rules of their own house, they were out there fundraising, sending out emails, solicitations, saying, look at what we're doing on the floor. Send us money. That's a shame. And they're doing it off of a tragedy. So I really think this, is, this was a low moment for the people's house, for, for, for democracy, for Congress. And if you believe so much about an issue, go, go work it in Congress like everybody else like every other issue, and by the way, it was working through the process. They did come up for votes, and they didn't succeed. So, so what are the options? What, what could you do to, to discourage that behavior or change that well, behavior? Well, I, I can't control what other people do. I think that it would be nice if they would respect the rule of law, respect the quorum, respect the fact that this deliberative body, Congress, has rules so that, so that people's voices can be heard, so that we can get things done. They don't like the fact that the bill that they're calling for was already rejected on a bipartisan basis. The, ACL, no the ACLU is, is, shares our concerns. We are no not, fly, no buy bill. Yeah, we are not going to take away a person's constitutionally guaranteed rights without due process. What they're asking for is something that says we can take away a citizen's rights without due process, violating the Constitution, violating the Bill of Rights, and that's not something we're going to do. Just so you know, what we have been working on is how do we make sure we give law enforcement the tools they need to make sure someone on a terrorist watch list, someone that's being suspected of terrorism, if they're trying to buy a gun, that they can do something about it. That's something we're working on. What the FBI is also telling us is do this carefully because Congress, if you do it the wrong way, you'll tip suspected terrorists off to the fact that they're under a terrorist investigation and you'll blow those terrorist investigations. So rushing to the floor, screaming and shouting, shutting down rules, asking for legislation to pass, violating constitutional rights, legislation that's already been rejected, that's no way to actually serve in a democratic institution. And as, Getting it right is what we're trying to do, and that's what we're doing. And as for background checks, because this is something, if you see them polling, the Marquette Law School poll in January, 85% of the people in this state said, we favor mandatory background checks on we private have, gun we, sales, we have, well, private gun sales, internet sales, or sales at gun shows. Uh, that's what we want to see. Uh, everybody who has a license to sell a gun, whether it's through a, a gun show or, or other means, has to do background checks. But if you and I are our next door neighbors and I want to sell you my 22 that I've had since I was a kid, there, there's no mechanism to, sell, to, to do a back. If I go to a garage sale and I buy something from you because you're my next door neighbor, that's a different story. But if I go to a gun show and buy a gun from a licensed dealer, that licensed dealer has to run a background check on me. You, you don't think there's any fix to the private gun sales, for example, the internet gun sales or gun show no, I think, sales? No, I think those are all reasonable issues we've got, to do, we've got to do and decide. But that's not what they're asking for. By the way, the Democrats had a clear majority uh, in the first term of Barack Obama. They didn't talk about any of this stuff. They could have passed anything they wanted to. They chose not to. What I worry about is an exploitation of an issue for political gain, for fundraising gain, off of a tragedy. Let's make sure that we have problems that are getting solved if we're going to prosecute terrorism. And that's the last point I will make is terrorism. This is about terrorism. This is about radical Islamic jihad. This is about Americans being radicalized by ISIS committing terrorist acts in America. So that is the real problem. We've got to make sure we're doing what we need to do to keep ourselves safe to prevent future terrorist attacks. And I don't think we should be dissuaded or distracted away from doing that. And the policy of this administration is terrible. The policy of this administration going after ISIS in Iraq, in Syria, and going after terrorism and people trying to infiltrate refugee populations coming to this country is not a good policy. And I don't think they want to defend that policy. And I think that's one of the reasons why you see these distractions. Final briefly, uh, those who would uh, look at Sandy Hook, for instance, and would say that's not necessarily the same as what happened in that's Orlando. Right. That's why we've already passed out a committee, our bill on mental health reform, mm -hmm. because we do think that there are mentally unstable individuals that, that was part of the problem. Columbine uh, was not mental, but so was um, Newtown was. 
So we've actually passed legislation. We're bringing it up when we get back from the, from the July 4th recess uh, to actually deal with mental health and access to guns on people who are mentally uh, unhealthy. Well, let me take a quick break. When we come back, more of my interview with uh, Speaker Ryan. We will uh, be talking about the latest with uh, Donald Trump, the Republican National Convention. Speaker set to chair it. That's when Upfront continues. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.